the most advanced batteries in the world. And we're about to break all the rules, you know, because no TV crew has ever been inside this factory. I'm with Gogoro's founder and CEO Horace Luke, who is giving me an exclusive look inside the company's battery factory in Taiwan. Production here runs 24 hours a day, and they can manufacture up to 390,000 batteries a year. Horace, I know it's very noisy here, but this is where you actually manufacture your battery packs. A lot of what you do here is proprietary. Tell me some of the design process that went to do setting up this entire facility. Yeah, this battery factory manufactures our latest generation battery, the fourth generation battery. You know, through that process, we learn a lot. Right? a lot about how to make batteries safer, how to make it consistent. And so we actually set off to design a factory that you can't find anywhere else on the earth, right? that actually produces battery pack using robots. We call this the RoboFab. It allows us to actually expand into places like India, knowing exactly how the battery pack is going to be made, with 46 different robots kind of dancing in unison, making battery packs from cell to pack, you know, with almost no human interference in the middle. Not all has been smooth sailing. Earlier this year in Taiwan, you had to recall some e-scooters because more than 500 riders reported battery failures. How did you handle this problem and what went wrong? Well, you know, it's not perfect. You know, especially being a startup, you know, there's always mistakes that are made. And, you know, without mistakes, you don't know what you did wrong and you cannot improve upon it. The great thing is that out of 1.3 million batteries in the field, we, you know, we have a handful of reports. And those reports come from multiple different aspects, being you know, improving the maintenance of, of a vehicle, all the way down to, yes, there were some battery packs that were you know, kind of vulnerable to certain environment use, and we improve upon that. And that's, you know, out of 1.3 million batteries swapping 400,000 times a day, you know, we're, we're pretty happy to with what we got today. You say you want to be the Android of EVs, and you're opening up your platform to other EV makers. To what extent is that vision paying off outside of Taiwan? Well, let's start with Taiwan first, right? Taiwan actually has been paying off really, really well. You know, being able to actually build this network and then prove that that network works. Now, internationally, it's, a, it's more of a chicken and egg question. It takes a long time to work up that, up that value chain until the chairman or somebody up on top says, I get it, I get it. I snap in and I get why the business model actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. That takes time. And now they can believe that this thing works to put money in and actually grow that network. Let's talk about India because you say the country is a holy grail for you, but you've hit some road bumps in India. Uh, your tie-up with Hero Motor has not really yielded results and your partnership with Bell Rise Industries is, is really not happening anymore. What's the biggest challenge you face? Nailing the world's biggest two-wheeler market. You know, speed bump might be a good way of explaining mm -hmm. it. And so, in India, it's really about trying to figure out the dynamics of the market. It's two different culture, seeing the approach in two different ways. And through the last couple of years, we've learned a lot. What uh, have you learned? We have learned a lot as far as um, what, what the give and takes are in the business, right? What somebody's expecting, what discussion needs to happen, and what are the gifts that needs to happen in order to make all of it work together. On some part of Gogoro is a very capital intensive market. Another part is going to be lightweight, but you have to believe in order to go in. And so through that, it's been a, I would say, a, a, a challenge to get everybody in sync. 